Welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And tonight, we have a very special guest. This ball player was a major problem for New York City point guards during the early 80s. He had hands like Jordan, which allowed him great control of the ball. So his handle was crazy with it. His high basketball IQ and natural leadership skills propelled him to greatness. First team, All City, honors in 1983 and 84. He also became the second leading scorer in his high school's history behind the great Ernie Myers. This Brooklyn baller was also second team All ACC. Help me welcome Tarleton High School legend and the University of Virginia great John Johnson. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yes. 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 You have you just stepped out into, into, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Come on. Come on. Go hard. Tickets cause the game about to start. Jay. Yo, salute. What's that, my God? What's going on with you? I'm great, man. I'm great, man. Can't call it. Yo, I want to, first of all, I want to salute you uh, with the Basketball Heads podcast, man. They, they, they long overdue for New York City basketball. And look like you off, off and running to some big things, man. So I want to salute you with that, bro. Uh, thank you, man. Coming from a guy like you who I looked up to, coming up, um, Bree Boy playing, uh, wanting to reach the status that you was on, man. It means a lot coming for you, John. I appreciate this. Oh, uh, of course. And that's facts, too. Yeah. I'm waiting for my guy. I got my artist here. He's just doing some things real quick. He, you know, running a little late, but he, he's yeah, here. I seen, I seen Joe, I seen Joe Green crack. Crack for the police, crack for the Yeah, yeah. Oh, yo, look. He, he he cracked for that early, right? He cracked for that early. So I'm gonna show you. Uh just so I'm waiting for him to come in. It's my guy John Arnold. We gotta sit him. Uh Snorm Roberts, because he was on here. Okay. Coach from Kansas. You know, of course, Gerald, right? Uh, and 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 the legend himself, Coach Haskins, he's still waiting for his. Coach, I got you. Trust me, coach, you're getting two. Oh man, that coach is mean, getting two, man. I gotta get coach two, man. That, that, that must mean I might have to wait a long time for mine, then. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what what happened was we were just trying to find creative ways to get them out to people. We were saying we were going to kind of frame them all, but then that was taking a long time because we gotta find all the same kind of frames. Right, so we right, said we're just gonna right. let people frame their own. So we just starting to put them out now and send them out. Those are dope, though, man. Wow. Yeah. Just trying to add a little twist to the show. I see what a lot of people are doing out there. I want to give a shout-out to my guy, Kate Pinnell, my guy, All Things Hoop, and my guy, Coach B, doing their thing. So, James, to up, you, man? my man. I'm waiting for some people to come in the room. That's what we doing. I see James checking in. What up, James? James is checking in. He's in the room. She had a, a good story, man. People showed you a lot of love, John. I want to let you know that, man. Uh, I appreciate that, man. I really do, man. I, I, right. It was a lot of balling. It was a lot of balling going on in those days, man. So, yeah, so, man. If, if somebody think about me like that, man, I appreciate it, man. I just try to go hard as I can because I know every night, every day, two times a day, sometimes playing in tournaments, man, you you had to be ready, especially for guards, because it was guards everywhere in the city. You know that. That's right. That's right. And, and speaking of guards, man, you, you was giving guards major problems during that era, man. So I want to ask you, first question, which I ask everybody, who introduced you to the game? Woo, baby. Um, 
it started in Brevoort. Okay. It started in Brevoort, where I was born at. I mean, you know, going to the Coliseum and seeing those games, I remember sitting on the wall. You you, you know the wall right under the basket. Yes, yes. About, before before they tore it down at the fence, they now with the wall, definitely, yes. Oh, they got a fence now? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, they tore, they tore down the wall. Uh, That's the only thing they fixed. Cause if, if you look at what I posted today, the court still like look like an empty pool. Wow, man, that's 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 sad, man. That's a landmark yeah. right there. Yes, but I, man, like six or seven, I remember, you know, going out there and hooping before the game, before the tournament game, because you had to get there early because it was going to be packed. That's <laughs> right. So I got my little seat underneath underneath the rim on the wall, and I remember, man, Bernard King, Al King. Fly Williams, George Johnson. I mean, everybody was coming through there, and and and, and the legendary Gil Reynolds. Um, you know, I don't mean this as no disrespect because this is what Gil was about, though, cursing everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, listen, you ain't the only one. We had a couple of guys on here that let you know he'll tell you, ain't gonna get you dead. <laughs> that's right, right? You know, but that's that. help. It helped us, and it turned us to good men. Right. Absolutely. They don't have coaches like that no more. They don't have coaches. No, they're like pacifying them. They, they talk about how many pairs of sneakers they're going to get the kid. Yeah, that, that's right. And if you do that, you, you you get locked up. So, I mean, it started in Brevoort. Um, I had Gil as a coach early. Um, then I went to, uh, from the Coliseum, I went to Our Lady of Victory. Right there on Troop, and we had some good teams, man. You and Gerald, you and Gerald played together. Gerald, Gerald, Gerald was a little younger than me. We had um, Brian Royal, who went to George Washington. I mean, we had a we we had about Joe Jackson. We had like three or four Division One players. I mean, when we was like ten years old on that team. So, wow. Yeah, that, I mean, that's where it all started, and then, you know. We played, you remember Citywide. Yes, yes. Okay. We're going we gonna to get there. We're going to get there. I want to go build the building blocks. So we're uh, your homegirl, your homegirl, Venus, said, what's up? <laughs> v, stop playing, V. <laughs> so we all know you grew up in Brevoort, right? Look, because I came over in the later years. Um... When people told me you was for Brevo, I I didn't believe it until you started coming back to play with us. Right, right. They was like, you know, John Johnson for me. I was like, John for Tyron Todd? <laughs> I thought you was from the Bronx. Right, I didn't right. know. That's how disconnected I was on the ball scene right. back then. A lot of people thought I was from uptown or the Bronx, but straight Brooklyn, man. Straight all day. Born and raised in Brooklyn. Even even when I was going, even when I went to Tyron Town, I was traveling an hour every day, so... Yeah, I, be, I, I remember you coming to Brevoort later on. I was going, we moved out probably around eight, seven years old, but always came back. You know, we always had family there until. Yes. Like, after college, yes. My family still lived there. So. And I'm glad you came back, brother, because you, you helped me out a lot. Facts. My man. Yeah. So, Our Lady of Victory was the first team you was on, right? Right. I, I, well, I played with Brooklyn USA for a minute. But they had around three thousand kids there, so <laughs> <laughs> went went down the block to Holy Rosary and then went to Victory. And man, I used to love them, but that that was citywide days, man. You're traveling on the train where your coach had to had to pass for the whole team to walk through the door. That's you right. Remember them days? Yep. Um, yep. Yep. Citywide was it, man. Victory, Victory, Victory. We had a nice, we had a nice crew. We were, we was tearing Brooklyn up and. Until citywide, you can tell I'm ready to get into. You tell I can. I'm ready to get into citywide. <laughs> the game that goes right, to right. Oh, we don't. We don't talk about that. So at the time, who was the best player in the neighborhood? Ooh, my age. Yeah, when you was coming up, it could have been the older guy. But who was the man? Like who was the guy? Yeah. Was Mel Davis that guy? But yeah, but yeah, but Mel was much older. Okay, all right, so we're not going to count Mel. Mel and we spoke to Mel, yes. Much older. And then, then when I started playing, it's not until now I remember, guys, but when I when I started playing, I had on blinders. I didn't really I didn't really see nobody else. 
You know, got you, got you. Paying attention to nobody else. I had to make sure my game was tight, or else you get you get ran out of there and, and coming up in New York, man. Very There's true. A lot of nice cats in, in, in New York, period. Right. So there wasn't a guy that stuck out around that time in Brevoort, around that time that was good. No, they what about Earl Robinson? Earl Robinson was a little older than you? Earl is a little older than me. We played we played together. Earl also came to Brevoort a little later. You know, Earl, I remember Earl in, in, in the center at 21. Um, coming in, everybody was like, "Who is this guy?" Because he was new to the new to the neighborhood. You know, if you don't, right. know, if it's a fresh face, everybody going to be like, "Who is this guy?" That's right. So yeah, Earl, Earl played with Earl, but Earl was playing football and he was doing everything. He didn't put, put yeah full time full time back, but Earl is my dude. Earl is one of my dudes. I know yeah, he, he told me to tell you what's up. <laughs> he told me to tell you what's up. He said he sent his love. He said you know, uh, John, me, him, and I played ten years together. He's like a little brother, you know. That's my brother right there. Yeah. All right, all right. So, what, did you go to junior high school in the same area as well? Nah, so, we moved That's, to Freeport. I know that, yeah, go ahead. And come on, man, you asking questions that you already know, man. Come on, brother, we, I gotta we, do my research, Jay. We, we, we moved from Freeport and we moved to Flatbush. Okay, and I went to Walt Whitman, at Walt Whitman Junior High School, which was rough. They didn't have a basketball team when I when I got there. But <laughs> they, didn't have, they didn't even have a team then. And so, but you know, I was like, man, there's no way in the world I could go here without no basketball team. Started a basketball team, and my mother also the first thing she did when we moved to Flatbush, the first thing she did was she said, I'm going to find a place for you to play ball. Wow. And I love to swim. So we searched the neighborhood. We went to a couple of PALs. You know, PALs was small and they had no swimming pools. So we found a boys club right behind Erasmus, right behind Erasmus High School. We went to uh -huh. a swimming pool and, and, and a basketball court. And that was another chapter that started in, in, in my basketball journey, a big part of my journey. Actually, yeah, I asked you that because my partner and best friend, uh, in basketball heads and in life, uh, Larry Stastem, who was Paco and Coach Green's son, right? Brother, that's my guy. We went to college together, we still oh, best friend, yes. Oh, so, when, when he when we talk about Walt Whitman, he always brags about you, like, yo, you know, John Johnson and Kenny Parker, they all went to my high school, my junior high school. <laughs> Right? He had all these bragging rights over me. I was like, well, he's from my peas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we got to share you a little bit, man. Right, right, hey, right. over in Flatbush. I'm over in bed -Stuy. Right, right. Bed-Stuy and Flatbush is home, man. That's home, man. I'm, I'm, I'm born in best, born in best but lived a lot of my years in Flatbush. And little Lad, like a little brother to me, too. So, Lad, you Yo. checking in? Yeah. Salute. Yeah. Gerald Salute. said the same thing. Larry is the little brother to all the top ball players that came out of Brooklyn. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So was you highly touted as a youngster coming up? Man, you're going to get me to start to my own horn, Pooh. Oh, this is what, yeah. no, let me tell you something, John. I don't want you to be shy, my brother, right? You, you, you took a lot of years where people was trying to, you know, Doubt you and right. put you down right now. We give you your crown, brother, because you deserve it, fam. I love it. I love it. All right. So, well, answering your question, then, absolutely. We we playing the city wide. Right? I'm gonna tell you a story. We playing the city wide with Our Lady of Victory, and we at Brandeis High School in the game to go to the Garden, and we playing against the Sun Devils, who was from uptown. Okay, yes. It was the Sun Devils, Gauchos, and Riverside. So we playing in City Rock. We playing in Brandeis again. And, and, and you know, the game to go to the Garden, there ain't one no team from Brooklyn to make it there. Right. So I remember that game vividly at Brandeis. My mother stood up. She was yelling. They cheating. They, <laughs> they cheating, y'all. So that game against the Sun Devils, though, it was a real heated game. They had some good guards. They had... Terrence Broadnax, 
They had Jim Jim. They had Vaughn Nobles. They had a crew. We had a crew too, but we lost. And that's the last game I cried. <laughs> I was so mad. Wow. So the next week, I'm in the boys' club in Flatbush. It's getting ready to close, and the doors close. And I turn around, and it's the coach from the Sun Devils team who beat us the week before. I remember I liked his style, Lamar Dyson. Let me give a shout out to Lamar Dyson, too, who's one of my favorite coaches of all time. Lamar, Salute. Lamar is the one who got this started for me. So Lamar comes to Brooklyn and he goes, Yo, we going to Phoenix, Arizona next week. I was like, Who, that same team? That man, you, you don't remember us getting ready to fight like three or four times in a game? That same team? <laughs> he was like, Yeah, don't worry about it. Just come and, and, and do the same thing you was doing against us. I said, man, you're going to have to talk to my mother because I can't do nothing without my mother got on the phone, brought me to the crib, and my mother was like, you know, they was from 124th and St. Nick. Yes. My mother said, as long as you come and get them and bring them home after practice, I have no problem with it. So we went to Phoenix. We won out of I don't know how many teams, and that was off to the races from there, bro. You, you caught the ball. That's when you really caught the serious uh, man, basketball we, ball. Like, do you want to do we this? Phoenix, we went to Phoenix, and, and, and it was like, I don't know how many teams, man, 200 teams, man. That was the first time I realized that people actually played ball outside of Brooklyn, outside of New York. I mean, teams from Vegas, guys with jerry curls, socks up to their knees. We had a team that was all white. Who we had never played against white players before. You know, coming from Brooklyn, being raised in Brooklyn. So right there, I loved it. I loved it. That was a start for me, man. I was like, ooh, wow. this is something that I want to do forever. So was it Sun Devil forever after that, or you bounced around here and there? No. Well, no, no, the Sun Devils. So now we come back. That was like, I was like 12, 13. We come back. The Sun Devils didn't have a ninth grade team. We, we like going into the eighth grade. So schools were recruiting me, Lincoln, uh, Bishop Lachlan, shout out to Spice and Silk from Lincoln, my man James, my man James from Bishop Lachlan and Mark. Um, but my mother wanted me to go to Catholic school. So we visited Lachlan first. <laughs> we visited Lachlan and we walk in and they must have been changing classes because everybody was running around like it was outside. My mother saw that. <laughs> it, it, it was too chaotic there for you. <laughs> my mother turned around. We didn't even go to the meeting with the coach, who was packed quickly at the time. We didn't yep, go yep. to the meeting. Okay, so Mr. Lorch, God bless his dad, from Riverside came and was like, told my mother, look, you go to Town Town. Now, I knew who Town Town was. I was always a student of the game. I always... Watch ball. I always read about ball, so I knew who Town Town was. They were just so far that I didn't, you know. He said, You go to Town Town and don't have to worry about tuition for four years. My mother looked at me and said, That's where you're going. <laughs> That's where you're going. We took the visit to Town Town, was an hour away from, from Flappers, where I lived on the train. An hour every day. I mean, it was rough, but it was, again, that was. The Sun Devils was the best move I made. Then going to Town Town was the next best move that I ever made. Yeah, because that was going to be my next question, uh, why Catholic School and not the PSL, but you answered that question. Uh, another question, who's recruiting you from Lincoln? <laughs> Bob, Bobby Hartstein, Bobby Hartstein. Bobby my coach, Bobby Hartstein. That's right. I got to talk I gotta talk to Coach and remind him because, you know, they, them guys always pride themselves on saying we didn't recruit. Right. He probably won't say that, though, but I remember that. Come on, John. I, I knew he going to lie to me. And my coach, you know, he'll keep it real. He'll say John John was a, a unique player. We try to have to get, you know, whatever. <laughs> and and, and how, how did you – I know this is your – you doing the question asking, but they usually they usually get guys from Lincoln that's from Coney Island. Yeah, I went there because 
Do you remember KK that looked that looked the Brevoort? Of course. Of course. Right. I play I play football. See, like Earl, I played for Coach Breeds. Oh, okay. Right? First, I was I was a quarterback. Me and KK won the championship. He was a year older than me. He went, uh, actually with the same age. My ass just got left back in seventh grade. <laughs> so he, he went over Lincoln before me. Right. And when he got there, he was doing well on JV, but then he got to some beef with some Courtney Allen dudes. Some dudes that I knew, but I wasn't there and didn't know at the time because my family is from Courtney Allen. Oh, my wow. father, brothers, sisters that live out there. Okay, okay. So I ended up going to Lincoln to play football, but I went out for the basketball team because I didn't want to ride the train home by myself. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. got cut. They got cut, and I made it. Wow. And I was going with them. Wow. So somebody, somebody in, in, in one of these shows, somebody needs to flip it and ask, and have an interview with you, brother. Yeah, my, my, my girl, Arthur, he already, he said, oh. yo, when, it, when it's going to your time, he want to do the interview. Oh, yes. All right, got Because everyone always asks that. Thank you, John. I appreciate that, brother. Oh, man, my man. Crazy, crazy story, too. Woo. But uh, listen, so did you get a chance to play in the Brief War Sports Foundation? Absolutely. Absolutely. As a youngster, I, I was so young, I was playing in my uncle's sneakers, which was like a... A size and a half too big, but I was still hooping. <laughs> what was you playing with Vaughn? Was Vaughn and Devere playing around that time? Vaughn was my man. Vaughn, Vaughn took me to Brooklyn, USA. Vaughn, and me and Vaughn was a backcourt for about two years when we was like eight and nine, like seven and eight. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you. Yo, salute to my guy Vaughn. I saw him today. It's my oh, guy. Yeah. Uh. I, I, I saw him his later years, but from what people used to tell me about him Ooh. and how great he was as you know coming up as a kid, Ooh. you and him playing together, y'all destroyed team, everything. Like seven and eight, man. Vaughn was Vaughn was dribbling through the whole team by himself, shaking the whole team by himself. Wow. Salute to my guy Vaughn, man. I know you're gonna check this out, man. So my definitely, boy, man. Like. For sure, for sure. So um. Let me see. Let me see. Let me go on, man. Now, y'all guys move on. You go to Tyler Todd. Who's on the team during this time when you get there? And do you play freshman ball or you go straight to varsity? <laughs> I started out with the freshman team. We came in there with, with, with four freshmen, four or five freshmen, too. So our freshman team was set. So we, the first couple of weeks of scrimmage, he blowing everybody out. The coach calls me in and he goes, you want to play varsity? I was like, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I'm ready. Right. Ernie Myers, Ernie Myers, who I learned, Ernie Myers was the man on that team at that time. Ernie Myers, my first two years, we went to, we went to the two city championships. Ernie Myers was the first person that I looked at and said, and, and saw how hard you had to work to go to Division One. Wow! I see how much work you had to put in after practice. That's that's what I remember about Ernie. Uh, Ernie was somebody that I, I I had a chance to see and learn from how hard it wasn't just about playing, practicing. You had to go hard and you had to work hard on your own. So Ernie Myers was on that team. Ernie was a killer in high school. Oh my gosh, killer! So and you was like number, you became number two scorer behind him after you left. I mean, so he was a great model, a great model. And, and, and Ernie, er, man, I love Ernie for that because I actually up close, I actually had a chance to just see how hard you really. It, it, it was more. That was the first time I really realized it was more than just run up and down the court. You had wow. to put in the work, you know, individually. Salute to Ernie Myers, man. No um, Brief Voice Sigma said I was in school at. Uh, VUU, and he was in Charlottesville doing his thing. Salute. <laughs> Ernie Myers was an assassin. Yes, he was. Yo, every, everybody be changing their name up in uh, Instagram. It's hard to figure out who is who. Yeah, I, 
Exactly. So crazy. All right, my man uh, Rick, my man Rick, he went to Wagner University, Wagner College, I mean, said he was a 10th grader at five star. I'm like, who's this dude? We exchanged shorts. What was that? What was that experience like, man? Five star? Yeah. Ooh, wee. You know what I loved about five star? I loved it because it was 24 hour basketball. I mean, if you wasn't sleeping, it was all basketball. It, it, right, you right. Playing a game, you was in stations. If you wasn't in stations, you was listening to a great speaker. So, <laughs> I mean, all basketball. You play, you play until you drop that five star. That's what I loved about it. Wow, my guy K Pennell, he has a show as well. Salute my guy K Pennell. Keep doing your thing. He said, "Salute to John Johnson. I used to come to the UVA camp when he was there. One of the reasons I started to play basketball." Oh man, K Pennell. That's salute, real. And he interviewed some of the Giants in basketball as well. So salute. Wow. Wow. wow that's Get my man Joe Johnson. My man Joe Jackson said, John John, Joe Jackson, Devil Dog, Brian Royal, yeah. Keith Hardy ran the city at 12 years old. <laughs> that's real. Salute. And those all my guys too, man. For sure. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, baby. For sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure. My man, CEO Entertainment, said John was my coach at Five Star. This is John Anderson for Nazareth. Yes. Wow, my man. Wow. Coach, coach Eddie. Salute to my man, Coach Eddie. Let me tell you a story about Coach Eddie. He is the woman's coach going on his fifth year at uh, Purchase College. Well, okay, we need to get him up here, man. We need to get him up he, here. He's he, he been following me up for a while, yeah. Yeah, we, we 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 need to get him up there, man. He 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 he's gonna be doing great things. He's doing great things now, but he's a young guy, and I, you know, talking to him and staying in touch with him and staying close with him, you know, keep me relevant. So, Coach Eddie, salute, bro. No doubt. He said, "KP, remind me to tell you about my guy next time I see you." <laughs> Is how we I guess we communicate to somebody on there. But definitely, uh, Coach Eddie, hit me up. I'd love to get your stories, you know, you. behind you and what you're doing. For That's sure. Good deal. Got you. Okay. So we're not going to finish through high school yet, right? Because right. we're getting on to your sophomore year. Did you move on to varsity in the middle of your freshman year or your sophomore year? My freshman year. My freshman year. And, 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 and in, in the preseason, before the season even started, my freshman So you year. did? Oh, so you was on, so you played Boston. We don't count preseasons, man. We don't count that. All, all four years, man. And at that time, at that time, there wasn't a lot of freshmen playing Boston at that time like it is now. So that was a big move, too. Wow. Yeah, yeah, because listen. Trust me, Lincoln didn't even have a JV at that time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that was like unheard of. Yes, yes. Which is crazy. So how did you guys do? Did you did you move into the star position early or did you have to work for that? Um, no, I had to work for that. I, now we had a senior by the name of Damon Glover who was starting in front of me. But I mean, I played every game. I played a lot every game my freshman year. My sophomore year after that, I, I I started for the rest of my career there, and when we played against everybody at Town Town, I think we won my first two years. I think I went to three city championships out of the four years there. You went to what? Three city championships. I think we and won. And how many did you win? Two. Two. We lost the last Damn, one. I, I, I can put that up there. Yeah, that's crazy. We went to three city champs. The only one, the only year I didn't go to city championship was my junior year. And we got knocked out by Billy Donovan. Who Yo, let me tell you something. And we we gotta get Billy Donovan up here some way. His name, his name gets thrown up here like a frisbee. Every now and again, somebody go, Billy Donovan gave us the business. Yo, Yo remember that white boy up in camp? Billy Do Billy Donovan gave us the business. You're like the fourth person that said Billy Billy Donovan gave us the business. Let me tell you something. There's not there's not too many 
cigars that I that I could say that actually that actually tore me up. Right, right. Billy Donovan, kick our ass, bro. Do say so, Agnes. Wow. Could, we couldn't do couldn't do nothing with Billy Donovan. My junior year, Billy was a senior. Couldn't do nothing with Billy. And I ain't scared to admit it. Tore us up, bro. That's crazy. Yes, yes. Man, somebody going hey. way back. Yeah, yeah, listen. We we right now, I'm in the process of putting together um this little discussion. I gotta pick a few people. Let me know if y'all wanna be a part of it. Uh hit me up in my DM. We want to have a discussion about the battles between the PSAL and the Catholic school leagues. I mean, like, who produced the best players? Like, definitely, we got to have this discussion. Woo! Let me just throw you know, We can do that a private. We can do a private Zoom discussion, then we'll put it out. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm in there. Bet. I'm, I'm definitely in there on that one. That's a, ooh, that's a heated discussion. Yo, listen, that definitely is. I'll put that up and people were just going nuts. Woo-wee. Mm-mm-mm-mm. I'm in there on that one. So, so how, how did it taste to win your first city championship? What was that feeling like? Oh, man. You know, I won a few tournaments when I was younger before that, but that was like an introduction to winning in the big time. Because I, yeah. our division stack and we had it was us you had power you had Ohalos you had Cardinal Hayes you had LaSalle so our division our division was crazy so the, to, the when the when the city championship my first year that that was big I thought I was gonna win four but <laughs> you get spoiled. Yo, after our first one, you get kind of spoiled. After, 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 after you, you went, you went too. You like, man, we winning the rest of these. <laughs> easy, easy. But little, little did I realize that Ernie Myers was gonna be leaving. So, you know, but that was big, man. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, that that definitely something uh, I wish a lot of people could experience um, while they're in New York City. My man so, Alvin Lott from Cardinal Hayes. Alvin Lott was an animal too. Oh my God, Alvin Lott, Rick Cole. What about Richie? What about Richie? Uh, Richie Radar Anderson. Richie Anderson. What? He's part of from right? Springfield. What's from Springfield? Springfield Gardens. Left hand scorer, Richie. Uh, I I never saw him play. I only heard the stories. Yeah, he was a, he was a scorer. Let's see. Public school had a lot. Now I'm, I'm gonna save that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna save the public school. Plan for <laughs> I bet, but, bet. But, but, but but Rich Rich was a score. He was tough. He was a pro scorer in, in high school. Wow. He was a pro scorer in high school. Absolutely. Did you play go to hoops in wheelchair? Both of them. Both of them. <laughs> I played in the first the first golden hoops. I played in the first Golden Hoops, and they had the day winning. Wasn't it in 83? The first one was in 83? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, I was there. Yeah, I remember yes. that. I was the freshman, yeah. Where was that? that I think that was at Col Columbia? Columbia. Columbia University, yeah. Um, It was nothing like that. It was nothing like the wheelchair, man. The wheelchair? Forget it, man. The wheelchair. And the best thing about the wheelchair is that was the first time we actually had to go to the hospital and got a chance to see sick people and talk to people who wasn't as fortunate as us. That was the first time that you realized how fortunate we was to be able to run up and down that basketball court because we had to visit. Hank Carter made us visit those 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 hospitals. We could if if you wanted to play in the game, if you didn't visit the hospital, you couldn't play in the game. That's so, real. We we had the wheelchair. Wheelchair was a lot of fun. It gave, it gave us a chance to mix Catholic school and public school players. So that was that that was heavy. Golden Golden Hoops, boy, you bring back some memories, cool. Yeah, cause it. I I just you know I never got a chance to to, to do the whole wheelchair thing, um, but it, it, from what I know about it and the guys who went through it, it just taught guys humility, um, and, and and appreciate. Uh, their God-given talents and their abilities. 
Absolutely. Right? Because sometimes we get, you know, a little high on ourselves, patting ourselves too That's much on the back, and we got people that. in the bed who can't move, right? All they can do is move their head, maybe, and watch you perform. That's so, right. That's right. And yeah. 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 And so, too, the, we had yeah. to write an essay. If you, if you didn't write the essay, you, you, you couldn't play. I don't care who you was. Hank, 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 Ms. Carter didn't care about that. If you ain't that's right. the essay, you wasn't playing. I don't care if you was first team on city or not. <laughs> that's right. That from nobody. That's crazy. So, did, did you monitor your game after anyone coming up? Not really. I mean, I love, you know who I love? When I was in high school, I remember seeing him. I was a freshman, um, and I snuck to the wheelchair classic. Um, it was in Queens, and they played that Monte Cristi, the old Monte Cristi, Kenny Patterson. Kenny Addison. I heard he was a problem. Woo! I used to love watching Kenny Patterson. He, he was probably the first and only person when I was in high school that I, you know, I didn't have time to look up to nobody because I, I, you know, I had to be ready for who I was going against the next day. So, but Kenny Patterson was the first guard in high school that I watched that I said, man, I love this guy game. And follow, wow. him, follow him through the Paul. And then the only other guard who I actually loved was Isaiah Tomlin. Wow. And anybody else, you know, I, I I was imagining myself playing against them. So, you know, I, I could I really didn't. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I, I yeah, didn't, I yeah. I didn't really have time to be saying how nice, you know, but we had a lot of nice guards in, in, in high school at the time when I was in high school, man. Oh, my. You, the public school guys, we had, okay, in Lincoln, you had Spice and Silk. Yeah, yeah. You, you had Elma at, at Anderson and yep. Paul Washington. You had the boys out of Andrew Jackson. Um, yeah, yeah, Boo Harvey, you had uh, Boo Ron Harvey. Edwards, right? Right. right. Yeah. Um, you have Ron Strickland. Ron Strickland I ain't even get the bro. I ain't even get the strict yet. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I ain't even get the really? strict yet. <laughs> right. Strict strict was a bad boy. Okay. Um and then in the Catholic And what about the Catholic school side? Who y'all have the Catholic school side? What's up just so? We have you had Mark and James at Bishop Laughlin, then you had Kenny Smith. <laughs> Um, um, oh man, it's so, so, so many guards, man. Whoever I forgot, whoever I forgot, yeah, I'm a right there, and, and, with those names right there, you can go around the country and smack anybody, right? With those names right there, y'all, all y'all can oh, go around man. the country and smack all the guards. It's just what it is. And I played with them. Kenny, we had Kenny Hutchinson, can't forget Kenny Hutchinson from uptown. And play with all of them. Gerald Green, my brother. Gerald Green, yeah, I was just about to say, Gerald Green just checked in, yeah. Gerald Green. For sure. This, yo, I'm glad this was able to come true. The City of Guards, James Majors, oh. Gerald Green, and now my guy, John Johnson. This oh, is beautiful, man. man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having oh, me. Oh, man, this is beautiful, so man. So to this podcast right here, it's going to be a lot of, a lot of copycats coming after you, so... so. <laughs> well, listen, guys already said that I was a copycat anyway, but it's all good. You got ESPN, you got Fox, you got all kinds of networks. Yeah, but we I just have to be one. I haven't seen, I haven't seen a New York City basketball network yet. So, <laughs> all right? So, salute, my God, salute. Out. So, how many letters were you receiving, man, your senior year? Oh man, oh man, I, phew, I had about six, seven, eight garbage bag full of letters from since I was a freshman. I was, I was, I was getting letters from from all over the place, man. I mean, coming home, my mother was like, "Look, look, enough is enough. <laughs> you, you better start. You, you better start. You better start making. You better start 
um, um, narrowing your choices down because we ain't got no, we ain't, we don't live in no mansion. We just living in the hood. You ain't got no place for all this, all this mail. <laughs> yeah, I had garbage bags full of mail, man. Don't, don't, but, but, but once you started getting mail, once you started getting personally written letters, not, not, not mail that they type down to everybody in the country. Talk it, brother. Talk it. Talk it, brother. <laughs> you know, cause they got, you know, they got millions of players that, that they send out to the same letters to everybody. No. Okay, Jay, you're, you're, go ahead, keep talking, Jay, go ahead, go ahead. So, but what, what, when, when one of the coaches wrote you a personally written... Go ahead, because this, this, is the, this is the generic, right? There it is. Right? There it is. And then you get... Woo! Right. Right? Right. You get the personals. Right. Right. This, this, this is the difference. <laughs> Right? Right, right. When you, <laughs> yeah, when, when, cool, when you got the personals, right, you couldn't stop smiling for the whole, for the rest of the day, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it meant so much. Because when one dude opened up his letter, and another dude opened his letter, and y'all let him look the same, but somebody took that pen. That's right. That's right. You knew that was serious. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I, was sure. letters from, I was getting letters from ninth grade. Wow. And the reason why I was laughing so hard when you was talking about your moms, because I can imagine what your moms are saying. Because I know you had way more letters. I didn't have like garbage bags. You know, they were just getting in the way with the bills she had to pay. You know? Right, right. Get those, get those wild stuff, making airplanes and flying them drunk. <laughs> right, right. Get these out of here. Um, I see somebody said that Mr. Lorch. Yes, yes, I'm about to get that. Did the late great Ernie Lloyd influence your decision to attend UVA? That's a great question. Whew. That's a great question. He beat you to it, huh, fool? Um, yeah, he wrote it, fam. I was going to say it anyway, but look, salute. Salute, that's my guy, Scar. My guy, Scar, bro. Scar's my boy. Scar's yeah, my guy. my guy from Lincoln. I miss my mother, too, man. Oh, man. Um... Mr. You know, yes. The answer is yes. I'm not even going to dance around that, man. The answer is yes. He, he, I, I already knew, I, I already knew where I wanted to go. But Mr. Lorch was ecstatic with that, with, 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 with that decision, man. I, and I used to love Mr. Lorch. I mean, you know, you hear a story, but never, don't pertain to me. Mr. Lewis was a great guy. He did a lot for a bunch of for 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 a bunch of guys, man, coming out of the hood that 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 wouldn't travel around the corner, let alone travel out the country or travel out of the state. So salute, even though he's not here, he's still here in spirit, Mr. Lorch. Love you. Yeah, salute. Listen, man, I, that's one thing we don't want to do here on basketball here. We ain't here to focus we, on nobody bad news. We ain't bad right. Friends. Right. I, I watch I watch Lamar Odom on the Drink Champs, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to start this show, John. They have my brother looking so bad on there, and they want to talk about anything basketball related. The only reason why we know about Lamar Odom is through basketball. Facts. That's how we found out about him. Facts. And I said so. Right. So I, and I was like, you know what? Our our basketball brotherhood. Now nah, we got we got to protect our brotherhood. Right, right, right. Right. That, that so, was embarrassing, man. That was yeah. embarrassing. So yes. I, 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 I'm glad. I'm glad you bringing a different a, a, a different focus to your podcast, man. So 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 people will come. People will come on your show with a smile on their face, like I did, brother. I want, I want everybody to feel comfortable. I want everybody to feel comfortable. You know, again, Derek Chivas made it a quote. He made a comment on y'all all star, y'all all city uh team and was saying how that Brooklyn, that basketball brotherhood is tight, a New York City basketball brotherhood. And I want to keep it like that, John. And you somebody who I looked up to, idolized, and and wanted to be like, even though I was six five and you was like six feet. You know what I'm saying? But oh, man, thank you for that. Yo, bro, you 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 embody everything of what a Brooklyn ball player should be, right? Oh, my man. 
You always kept the professional around us. You always gave us a uh, word of encouragement. And you always made sure we played. Right, right, right. We had to be good enough to earn it. But, yo, you gave us a chance. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, Pooh. Yo, you how was it like playing against – did you play against Jordan and Lynn Baez? No, Jordan, yeah. Jordan left a year early. Okay. But Baez – I played against Bias, man. man. Oh Bro. my God! Oh. How would life be for us now if he would have lived? Oh man, first ballot Hall of Famer, maybe. He had been a friend. He was a monster. I remember seeing him at Five Star when I was like a freshman, and wow, he he was playing in the NBA. You know, in the in the in, at Five Star, they had the the. the NIT, the NCAA, and the NBA. Yes. I was in the ninth grade. He was in the NBA. And he he walked in front of me. He was the first person that I actually seen with their name on the back of their Nike. Not Ricky. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking what? about from like Nike must have gave them to him in high school. And that that wasn't heard of back then, John. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> Yo. I see he walked in front of me and you know you know what somebody you could tell that they are that they are high jumper from the way they walk. <laughs> that they could jump out the gym just by the way they walk. Right, right. That was Lynn Bias. And little did I know I was going to the same conference that he was in and he was a month he didn't get to Wow college, get to college and he was the first player that I seen that actually Referees were scared of him, man. He was talking to referees like they were in CYO. And I was like, <laughs> Are you serious? I said, How can he talk? To, how can y'all let this guy talk? And he was like, Man, shut up, rookie. Shut up, New York. I was like, All right. <laughs> I said, All right, say no more, man. He dunked on the, the man. Lynn Byers was a mean, he was a monster, man. When I say that, I mean, at the highest level, whew, he was grabbing people, he, he he was grabbing people dunks. He grabbed somebody on our team dunk. Somebody went up on our team and tried to dunk with two hands. He grabbed it off of the backboard and came down with the ball in his hand and just walked off the court. Right, he was so, he was so ocky, his neck was so big. Beautiful, he, his body was crazy. No, look at like that. Why is it? It's a grown man playing in college. He had he he, he had he had muscles in his eyes, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, he was that diesel on his eyebrow, man. He had muscles everywhere. His body beautiful. Wow, Larry said John Jones showed me my first pair of Air Force Ones with the green soles in Arizona. <laughs> wow. Go ahead, Larry. That's fair. That's bro. crazy. You're lying. Tell your pops I said what's up. And your brother Paco. So how was how was your, your experience overall, you know, during that college life? Overall, like all the positive stuff. Best time of my best time of my life, man. Best time of my life. Now, that's what that's one of the reasons. The reason, you know, one of the reasons why I went there is because me being naive is that. The guards were gone. Othell Wilson, Ricky Stokes, yes. and Rick Carlisle, they were leaving. They were graduating. So I was like, I want to start. Not, not not, not, thinking that, you know, it would be better if I had a senior or somebody in front of me that could show me the ropes and get some experience from. I was like, mm -hmm. I, 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 I could start. I'm going there being the ATC. That's where I'm going. In, in fact, I only took one visit. Pooh. That was my only visit. Wow. If I knew what I do now, and I would have just took a visit to University of Hawaii just for the visit. <laughs> but I took one visit. No, that, that's that's real. That because at least you you have options and get to see something different. You have five visits, man. I took one. I, I went on that visit, and I went on that visit with another another one of my bros. Who God bless the dead, Ed Buga Davender. Yes, salute, definitely. Oh man, Ed, Ed, Ed Bug Out was my backcourt partner for like three years at Riverside, and wow, we took a visit to Virginia together. They came, they came, 
they picked me up and they picked him up separate. They met us at the airport and they took us in a helicopter. They took us in a helicopter to Virginia. We flew over the top of Virginia and, um, you know, once I seen people studying on the lawn, on the grass outside, like it's something I've never seen before. I, 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 the, and the, the campus is beautiful. I said, uh, yeah, I yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I said, I don't need to go to no more visit. That's me, dumb me. I, mean, I had five visits. I took one visit. What's wrong with me? So, Bug Eye said, we going to go here. I already knew I was going there. And, and, and Virginia had recruited from my sophomore year on in high school. They made me the number one target. It, it was mutually understood that Virginia was the leader for me. Bug Eye said that weekend, he said, I'm coming here with you. I said, Bug Eye, stop playing with me. Stop playing. The next week, he visited Kentucky, and the rest is history. I mean, you visit Kentucky, man. Come on. It's a wrap. It, it, it's Yo, a wrap. I remember, God bless his soul, uh, Conrad McCray and Kenny Anderson kind of doing the same thing. We was up at uh, Empire State Games. And we was in the back lawn, and I told the story about the cops coming and Ralph James saving the day by speaking to the cops and totally using words. We had no idea what they meant at the time. <laughs> but salute, salute to Ralph James. But uh, Kenny, you know, Conrad was like, yo, I signed. Yo, you coming? And Kenny was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Kenny Anderson, wow. And you know the rest is history. Kenny's probably on here because we interviewed him already. He's always on the show. You had K.A. on here already? Yeah, facts. Wow. Kate, we had Kenny Anderson, Speedy Claxton, Jerry Ice Reynolds. Oh, Jerry Ice Reynolds. Yeah. He's on here, so if you go on my IGTV or scroll down my page, you can see all the interviews. That's fact. Jerry Ice Reynolds was one of my favorite cats also, man. Jerry, I played with Jerry... I play with Ice Jerry. I don't even feel right calling him Jerry, man. I play with right. Ice. <laughs> Jerry, I sound crazy. I played with Ice in the pro am for about four years, man. Ice was so smooth. Yes. Ice, Ice was a pro. He was before his time too. Ice could play right yes. now. I mean, if Ice yeah. had the game, Ice got the game that he could play right now in the NBA. Yeah. And, and, and look just like one of them guys. He kind of. He invented that position because right. there was nobody right. six nine handling and passing back then right. besides you know John, Magic Johnson out the freaking right. nature. Absolutely, absolutely. Ice was definitely mm -hmm. before his time. Yeah, I see you back there, artist. Don't forget. To <laughs> yeah, yeah, get it there, on. Man. Don't, 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 don't get to hit me off with that picture back there, man. You, and, 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 <laughs> yo, yo, those pictures are absolutely great, bro. You do a Thank wonderful you, job, man. Thank you, Ralph. Thank no you. No doubt. Salute to you, too. Yo, he's a Jackson guy. He played for Coach Granby. What? Queens. <laughs> yeah. Coach Granby is a legend, man. Definitely. Oh, yeah. So, yo, Jay, hold on for a sec, yo, bro. Y'all spoke to James Majors last night. No, two nights ago. And Gerald Green the other night. He said he got $5 for mill money at Seton Hall. <laughs> $5? All right. Thank you. Yo, bro, I played at a mid-major college, and I got way more than that. Yes! No. Gerald said it wasn't until they senior year when he started getting more money. No, 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 no. See, I, I hope, I hope, I hope old age ain't, ain't, ain't sinking in too early, and y'all forgetting to tell us the truth, bro. $5. No, Gerald, Gerald confirmed it. Gerald said yes, and it wasn't until Gerald's senior year when he started to get a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> Yo, hey, in the Big East, in the Big East. Come on, John. Wow. See, wow, man. Don't, don't. All schools supposed to get the same thing? No, it varies, right? So here, here it is, John. I don't know if you ever heard this before. My coach explained to me how it worked. How it goes, the schools kind of pay each other to play, right? Right, right. So right. a school like Virginia, we pay y'all. So y'all would give us maybe $80,000, right? Right, right. The school get eighty. dollars We're like some of the money for transportation, right. food, right. and board. Right. Then there's another stipend 
for the ball players. Right, right. And I know when we played y'all, we got like, and that's going from Jersey to Virginia. Right. That's like a three hundred fifty dollar, four hundred dollar trip for us. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> you, how the hell see all getting five hundred dollars? <laughs> I mean, five dollars. <laughs> crazy, five dollars, yo. Crazy. Man, that's what, yo, people, that's what my yo, was, only my only real ball players know what's going on. If you play college ball, if you got um, that mill money put aside, you know what we're talking about. John, how was your situation in Virginia? Woo! Um, we can talk about it now. And, and it was all legal, so. It was, it was sweet. It was sweet, especially when we went on the road. Yes. The road you got more. I forget actually, but but it was sweet. I mean, you 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 could go to a, 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 a five star restaurant and get you prime rib and get you whatever you wanted. Or, or, or facts, money. facts, we, we, facts. We, we had cats on our team that was so tight though, bro. <laughs> that they would go to McDonald's and get a, a burger and save that money, man. Yo, want me show you my trick? Here's my trick. Since we stayed in a five-star hotel, I would get the, the, the hotel to put me like a plant of sandwich meat. Ask Larry, he'll tell you this. So my guys is going out to the restaurant and eat it. We just going to go down the store, buy a loaf of bread, some mayonnaise, and be eating for the whole weekend right. and pocket our money. Right, 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 right. Now, I, I wasn't doing that. I, I was, you know, I was like... I live for the day, man. I said that when we get that next the next game we play, man. I say that and it never worked out like that. So Right, right. <laughs> and, right. But, but you know, you know why I didn't really we had good jobs in the summer, so anything I spent, anything I spent with that meal money made back up in the summertime with our jobs. Yeah, that 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 was the suck part for us because they didn't give us no summer jobs. You had to kind of hustle it to your home. Yo, right. my homegirl said you was eating bologna sandwiches, fool. Nah, nah, I don't, I, nah just turkey. All kind of turkey. Okay, I was, I was off the beef. I was off the beef way back then. <laughs> Man, coming from Brevoy, fool, stop it. Coming from Brevoy, we, we come from Brevoy, we knew what bologna sandwiches was about. Oh, oh, definitely, definitely know what it is, man. You cook that up with some butter and, and toast that bread, you'd be good. <laughs> See, yeah, there you go. Said so Pooh would chef up some. We would go to Pathmark with that mill money. That's right. We'd go buy some food instead of going to the restaurant. Well, bro, we got no other butt. <laughs> so, John, who was the best high school player you played against, the best college player, and the best pro player you played against? Wow. Just three. You got some good. Boy, you have some great. Now, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. John, I'm going to go out and come back in because the session is about to end. All right. And we'll come right back and finish part two, all right? Absolutely. Uh, I'm coming right back. Right. Come back, people. Trust me. It's going to be good. I saved it. I saved it, Stim. I saved it. Trust me. I know. I know. It's classic. Got my guy. Look at that, man. Oh, man. Yo, this is awesome, yo. Wow. So, I know I had, you had three questions to answer for me, right? Yes. The yes. best high school, best college player, and the best pro you played against? Uh, high school, do it have to be a guard? Huh? Does it have to be a guard? Mm, no, not at all. Man, the best high school... The best high school player that I played against, uh, probably, probably Pearl Washington, man. Pearl probably, Pearl, Pearl, 
Farrell was the best high school player I ever seen and, and played against him a bunch of times. So, I mean. Wow. Pearl was a pro in high school. Early. College? Man. That's a loaded question right there. Probably, uh, I'm going to go with. Probably Johnny Dawkins. Wow. Okay. 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 But the but 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 in, in college, man, in the ACC, it was so many guards. You had Mark Price, you had Tommy Amica, um, Muggsy Bowes, Nate McMillan. The ACC was stacked with guards. Yeah, it was like the ACC was like New York almost. <laughs> right. Right. Because New York was almost in the ACC. Right. Right, so so I'm, right. I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Johnny Dawkins in in, in, in college. In the pros, I mean pro players that I've ever played against. And you could you could have played against him in college, and he could have went to the pros, right? That's another that's another loaded question, man. I, I mean, I played against a bunch of guys, man. I played against a, I mean. As a as a point guard, I, I, Mark Jackson. I gotta give Mark his respect. As far as I love, a, I, I love somebody that loved to pass the ball. So Mark, what is Mark number two? Are he in the top four in the NBA? In the yeah, he top, I think I think he top five. I know he top five. He about three or four. He one of those. Yeah, in assists. Okay. Um, but you you know who I love as a guard too. I love Strick, man. I love Rod Strickland. Strickland. I love Rod Strickland, man. As a Rod, Rod was a bad boy, man. He, he 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 knew that bad boy, boy, just like his just like his godson. Yes, he knew that bad definitely. Boy. So those are those are the cats. I mean, it's a it's a lot of cats. Those are the cats that I you know I had to really lace them up tight for when I when I knew I was going to be matched up against them. I had to lace them up real tight. Got you, got you. So what 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 do you do to stay stay in shape to stay healthy these days? Man, look at other people play. Look at the TV. I mean, I still bounce the ball. I look <laughs> around, and I love. I, I I I run up and down. But as far as playing in tournaments, because they got that 50, 50 and over in BRC that I, you know, I, to me, man, I played so much ball. I I, I gave it everything I had. I I had enough for playing. Uh, uh, competitive back but 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 I'm still a student of the game. I I, I watch the games, I read I, you know, I know everybody. So so you know it, for me to like I can't even if I watch an NBA game, if there's a double header on, I could probably only get through one game because I I put so much into it. It's like I'm playing. So I'm exhausted after one watching one game. So you know just watching the game keep me into it. Yeah. Yeah, look, bro, I tell these guys the same thing. I played enough basketball and been in the gym so much. I don't mind watching it now. Right. And right. I, and, 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 look, and another thing, like I pride myself on only getting my ass bust three times my whole life, and I don't want to give nobody <laughs> no shot now. And my knee's all bad. I'm slow as hell. I can't exactly. move. And somebody goes, yo, I just gave pool 50. Exactly, exactly. Now, we ain't doing that, man. Exactly. We're not doing that. Exactly. So, with all this knowledge and experience you have in the game and that you love so much and that gave you so much in life, are you passing the torch to anyone, any of your kids? Anybody that I can, man. Anybody that I can. Anybody. I could walk past a park and see somebody playing it and they doing something I think that I, I, I could help them with a little. You know, you, you, you got to be careful and watch what you say and how you say, you know, to, to cast because you know the younger younger generation now don't 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 want to hear nothing from the OG. So, you know, but if I if I can, I can see somebody walking down the street just dribbling a ball, and I will put my two cents in if I think it's worth it. So anybody that I can pass it on to, I I, I do. Yeah, and, and and that's a narrative we got to change, John. Right, what I see because I think guys are willing to listen. I just think we just gotta try to find more creative ways to reach them. Right. Because when we was coming up, it wasn't a lot of guys reaching out to us. True. 
I'm gonna keep it one hundred. Like, true. but it, the amount of the amount of black men that I can say like kind of helped me, right? right? On my way up was far in between. It was mostly white men who kind of helped me right. along my way when I was young. So what I'm right. saying now is that now that a lot of our brothers are in position of power in basketball in New York City, we should take what we learn to make things better for the next generation. Right, right, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And, and with, with so much going on and so many distractions, we got to be creative in reaching the young people. Absolutely, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I so, agree. Yeah, I, I work with some of the most difficult kids in New York City, and sometimes it's, it's rough in the beginning, but then when when you see a young man like I saw the other night, um, downtown Brooklyn, young man saw me and like he gave me the hug of life. Like and I felt the same thing. Nice. And my, my my boy was saying, Yo, G, you must that kid love you, man. Right, right, right. And he was a kid out there, he was out there stopping problems that somebody else is about to start. Right. Right. So, right, so, right. so, salute to my uh, former student who I saw the other night, man. Absolutely. I forget everybody's name, but you know I love you, man. Absolutely. For sure, man. So, John, we coming to the end of the show, brother. My man. You know, I just want to say, man. You know, from the bottom of my heart, man. Everybody that's watching, brother. Yo, you meant you mean so much to us, brother. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I don't care what anybody else has said. I know what you have done for me and the people that surround me. And when I walk these streets and when I mention your name, people smile. My man, I appreciate that, Pooh. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me on, brother. And I'm going to be tuning in to all your guests because cause you do a great job and, and you're off to bigger and better things, man. You hear me? Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. I'm telling you. I'm I just want to let everybody you. know this Sunday, we are doing it big. We got coach, the legendary New York City coach, Ted Gustus. Woo. That's Sunday. And if y'all think that's some, we got one of the guys who we coached and mentored to come up and be a four-time NBA All-Star. And that's Rolando Blackman coming Monday, 8 p.m. So I please think, stay tuned. I also want to um, thank the people who, who commented and, and, and wrote in Tina V. I mean, all my people. Thanks for for writing in, and and I appreciate you. No doubt, no doubt. And my man, uh, Bet Mason. That's right. He said, "All things who be blessed. Life is short. We all need to take a look in the man in the mirror and be positive." Listen, anybody who come on this show, be positive, man. We we. I don't um, appreciate any negativity. We're not here to do that. We're here to shed the spotlight for all of our New York City kings and queens that come to the show. That's all we're here to do. You want the negativity, go to TMZ, go to ESPN. <laughs> we ain't about that. We ain't doing none of that. I'm not reporting nobody negative information or I don't care about the rumors. I do not care. We're not doing that here on Basketball Heads. We here to salute my guy, my friend, my big homie. This is what we doing here, man. So oh, man. I'm gonna show you the pitch again, John. So we about to get out of here, man. So you Thanks. go eat your dinner. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, man. That's right, man. Here you go. You're a shining star, man. Wow. Yo, I'm gonna get that right now. And he got that form too, fam. Yeah, man, that, what a picture, man. Yo, that guy, yo, he's a superstar. That's a dynamic. But sure. right there. Uh, and we're going to invite everybody to the, we're going to recreate all, all these paintings and we're going to make them paintings. And then we're going to be in my man art gallery on 527 Myrtle Avenue. All right, we're going to have the Basketball Heads Art Gallery coming soon. And if y'all really want to come and purchase some real art, because, you know, look, got two guys, right? My guy Mel here. Then I got my guy Voodoo. Voodoo, he's like the, the new Arabaskia. Go to Voodoo Faith. I'm not, I'm not lying. Go to Voodoo Faith. 
Voodoo Faith on Instagram. Yo, Mel, bring me my picture on the wall, please, real quick. Let me show you something, John. All right. My guy, his work is like on a breakfast club, like when the breakfast club come back and you watched him on right. YouTube, his work is up there. Um, Donna Rollins uh, promotes his stuff. And a lot of stars, he's doing some things for like Chuck D. Uh, he did something for Stevie Wonder. He did something for Beyonce. Look, look, look. This is what he did for my birthday. Wow. Yeah, that's a bad this, this is my guy, Boodle. So, right? So I got two great artists here. And we're going to be able to showcase wow. my guy, Jamel, the ball player, artwork at my guy, Voodoo's art gallery. And we're going to call it the Basketball Heads Art Gallery. And we're going to be wow. featuring some of you guys. Like, your painting is going to be in there. Like, the, you'll get this version, but, like, he's going to do another painted version of you. Oh, uh, that's sweet. That's sweet. I can't wait. So we're going to take all you guys and put you guys in the gallery. And we're going to do another video of that and definitely keep showing our love, man. This is what we're going to do, fam. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Can't wait yeah. to be on again. You hear me? Yo, I, I'm going to call you, John, and let you know when we're going to set up that discussion with the PSL and the uh, Catholic school, all right? Okay, do that. Do that, brother. Anybody else that want to be a part of that discussion, please DM me, all right? It's going to be a private Zoom conversation, and, you know, we'll have some fun. Nice, nice. Appreciate it, bro. All right? Thank My you, God. Dope. Appreciate you, brother. All right. Salute. Peace. No Peace. doubt.